I'm pleased to share this devotional with you today. But it comes uh, with some concerns uh, today, and uh, I wish to share them with you and then at least suggest a, a place that would be a starting point uh, for us as Christians. Not an ending point, but at least a starting point. And I'm sharing this with you on Tuesday, April the 23rd, so news could potentially change uh, even before, uh, if you're uh, watching this a day or two later. What I'm concerned about are the protests that are taking place at some of our college campuses in America. They're taking place uh, most notably at Columbia University, but also at New York University, MIT, and Yale. Particularly, these encampments are about uh, the ongoing conflict between uh, Hamas and Israel. And at uh, Columbia University, they've even had an encampment uh, that uh, has formed on campus, a Gaza Solidarity Encampment, where those who enter into this uh, place uh, out in the um, the public uh, area of uh, Columbia University. Uh, students who enter there are committed to demilitarizing education, to uh, enrolling in revolution, and then for globalizing the Intifada. Now, there have been calls uh, for the president of Columbia University to resign. Uh, she has not resigned as of uh, uh, this devotional. There have also been calls uh, to bring in the National Guard. There have been a number of arrests that have taken place uh, in the last few days. Now, I said that this was uh, devotional was going to be a starting place uh, for for us as Christians, and I would just like to draw your attention uh, to the importance for Christians to be known as peacemaking people. When there's so much protest in the world, and our young people are getting upset, and the situations may indeed be upsetting. Still, we must remember that our calling, first and foremost, is to peace. And so I'd like to uh, uh, just read uh, several sections uh, from the New Testament for our thought uh, for devotion today. Starting first with uh, the very famous sermon, uh, the Sermon on the Mount, Matthew 5, uh, 9, where Jesus says this, Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are the peacemakers, not the peace, let's say, uh, keepers or enablers, but the peacemakers, those who are trying to bring peace in a time uh, when there is hostility. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God, sons belonging to God, are those who are trying to actively make peace. Let's switch uh, uh, writings now in the New Testament, and we go to Paul in Romans chapter 12, where he's uh, writing to the Romans. It's a congregation he hasn't met yet. He knows some people at Rome, but he has yet to visit Rome as he's writing this letter. <laughs> and he says this in Romans 12, 18, if it is possible, as far as it depends on you, live at peace with everyone. If it is possible, it might not be possible, but let's start with uh, the basis point. If it's possible, then let's live at peace one with another. Aim for peace first rather than hostility, at least as much as it depends on you. Now, I also want to uh, point out to one other special uh, thing that is uh, true for us as Christians, that our Savior uh, chooses to offer uh, us peace, a peace beyond uh, understanding. And I read now from uh, John chapter 14, these words are being given uh, right before there was going to be so much violence affecting Jesus, um, our dear Savior. And he writes, uh, he says this in uh, verse 26, But the Counselor, the Holy Spirit, whom the Father will send in my, na my name, will teach you all things and will remind you of everything I have said to you. And then he says this about peace. Peace I leave with you. My peace I give you. I do not give to you as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled and do not be afraid. 
there's a special peace that God gives his people. It's a special peace he gives us. And no matter what we might be upset about or disturbed about, remember that we serve the Prince of Peace who promises to give us peace. Now, indeed, there are things that are very disturbing in the world, in Gaza, in Israel, and for places where I've been in Ukraine. And it does, particularly having been to Ukraine, it does trouble my heart to see what is happening uh, in Ukraine. But the first place, the starting place for the Christian is to find peace in our Savior and to try and seek peace with others too. And of course, then this might lead on, us on to other actions in the future, but let's not forget the starting place. The starting place for the Christian is peace, for then we replicate uh, our God who is a peacemaker and whose Son has promised to give us a peace that is beyond all understanding. Will you now join me with a word of prayer for Gaza and Israel? as well as uh, Ukraine and Russia, and ask for peace. Let's pray. Father in heaven, we uh, see uh, the world being increasingly uh, upset and angry with each other. And we see uh, the problems that are taking place um, between Israel and Hamas. And think of those uh, who are very vulnerable in uh, Gaza right now. And we do pray, Lord, for your protection on the weak and on the innocent and uh, the infirmed and those who have no place to go. And we look to you, Father, because uh, you're the only one who can help. You're the one who can protect those who are so vulnerable. So we look to you and pray that you would take care of them and that you would bring a lasting peace in this area of the world. And we think also of Ukraine and Russia, and we pray for a lasting peace there too. But in all these things, Lord, we pray that you would help us to carry on as people who are affected by your deep peace that you give, and help us truly to be peacemakers, and so show ourselves to be members of your family. Bless us today, Lord, to take away our other concerns and give us this peace that is beyond all understanding. We pray this today in Christ's name. Amen. And may God's blessing be with you.